Clayton, I felt good about Clayton right there at Eaton. And um, when you got Rendon and Soto, so I felt that um, I like Clayton. I threw, I don't know what it was, a couple pitches. And we had Clayton ready for whatever today. And uh, so for Maida to go through Soto, um, you know, Kenta in this role, we really liked him against the right-hander. And um, the success that Clayton's had against Soto uh, with a two-run lead, I'll take Clayton, you know, any day in that situation. I just think it's one of those where it was easy for me to get Clayton with uh, the low pitches to get Rendon and then go out there and get Soto and um, to have Kenta behind him. Uh, that, was, that was my thought and not have Kenta go through Soto. You know, when is the analyst analytics going to come into play and, you know, show that Kershaw hasn't been, you know, successful in the postseason. When is that, you know, kind of a conversation to have? I, I, that, that's, a, that's a tough question for me to answer, honestly. JP in the back row. No, pregame you mentioned it was all hands on deck. Um, just how available were guys like Rich Hill, and Dustin May, Stripling, and I guess Julio down in the bullpen? Julio's, I mean, Julio's available. Um, obviously, Dustin was available, but two innings in an off day, we haven't done that to him. Um, so now you're looking at potential um, effectiveness. And so I don't think anybody could have been more effective than Joe in that ninth inning. And, and so it was 10 pitches, the velocity, the command, the curveball. And so, uh, you know, to go out there and send them out there again, I felt really good about it. Back left. Uh, Dave, obviously you played uh, over the years with the many athletes I've, I've interviewed. They, they remember the really rough times equally as much, if not more, than the great times many years after their career. What do you say to Clayton Kershaw after tonight? He's a pro. He's, a, you know, probably the best pitcher of our generation. And um, for him to make himself available tonight and got us out of a big spot right there. And, um, you know, it just didn't work out. And so, you know, there's always going to be second guessing when things don't work out. But, you know, I'll take my chances any day on Clayton. And um, it just didn't work out right there. Barry, second row. Hey, Doc. Uh, so rephrasing the question a little here, you went with Bueller for 117, which is a little abnormal for what you usually do. How much of this game was bent on the analytics and how much of it was bent on gut feeling about what you thought was the right thing to do in those situations? Well, I, I don't think, um, you know, analytics, well, Walker was throwing the baseball well. Um, the command, nothing was compromised. And... You know, once he walked Turner, you know, I liked, I thought Walker had had enough. I thought he emptied the tank. And so to get Clayton to get us out of that spot, I felt good about it. And Clayton, it's not about analytics. It's about he's one of the best pitchers in the game. And for him to go out there and throw four pitches and to go back out there and get two hitters, um, I felt really good about that. And um, so... You know, it's more of, I don't think it was an analytic question. You know, it's, it's a guy that I believe in, I trust. And, um, you know, it didn't work out. Kenta ended up cleaning it up. And Joe Kelly comes out, rested, and threw the ball really well and was very efficient. And my eyes tell me that he should go back out there because he's throwing the baseball really well. A couple more, Andy. Dave, even when you have faith in your process, when bullpen decisions backfire, the manager tends to get blamed. Do you feel responsibility for this loss? Sure. I mean, if, if, if the blame falls on me, I've got no problem with it. You know, I, I feel that, you know, my job is to put guys in the best position to have success. And uh, if it doesn't work out, there's always going to be second guessing. And I got no problem, you know, wearing the brunt of that. That's okay. I guess the, the disconnect is that Clayton's stuff is, is obviously different from what it was when he was building his resume of being the greatest pitcher in his generation. And so I'm just, what is it that you trust in that spot over Kenta who has just been more effective in short stints? Well, I, I think that the thing is that 
we didn't we wanted to keep Kenta I wanted to keep Kenta away from Soto and so um, you look at what Kenta's done um, he's been a righty killer and he has been throughout his career and so yeah there's a Rendon situation but then there's also Soto behind there so I, I just felt that the way Clayton was efficient um, I feel great about running Clayton back out there for two hitters.